everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make a crocheted case for the Tamagotchi Uni, so stay tuned. I'll show you what you need to start. So this is a look at the case that I made. I made the same one for each of them, and it's uh, just a simple crocheted case. We've got a hole for the little charm area, and then a hole for the charging port at the bottom. And I'll go through the steps and show you exactly how I made uh, these cases. So I'm going to put these aside. Do you want to see what my Tamas look like to start before we get started? So here they are. I've been trying to treat them different so I get different Tamas, but even though I've neglected them differently, I ended up with the same. So I'm hoping I get different Tamas. I'm kind of getting frustrated always getting the same ones. I keep getting um, Woo Patchy and I keep getting Mamechi. Yeah, I think that's about it. So Hopefully I get something different with these. So to start, I'm gonna use this crochet hook here. This one says it's a number three, and this is my grandma's old crochet hook. So when I look up this online, it says that a three is a D. Uh, for comparison, I don't have another D crochet hook, but this one here is a G, and it is um, a number six. So you can kind of see the difference in the size between those two. So again, this is the G and this is the D that I'm going to use. The D is showing as a number three. It doesn't actually have any information. It just says number three right there. Uh, and this is an old hook that was my grandma's. So this is the smallest one I have that I think works the best for the cases. I'm using a smaller hook because I want to get a, m a more accurate size for my crocheted case. If you watched my other video where we used the bulkier yarn, it built the case up really quickly because we used bigger crochet hooks, a thicker yarn, and so we didn't have to do as many rows. But this way, with using a smaller hook and doing a larger number of rows, then I can be more detailed as to when I choose to work up the side of the case. and get more of a precise edge because it won't be too big or too small because I can make sure it fits very close. Does that make sense? So we're using a smaller hook to get more rows so we can be more precise about when we choose to make the walls uh, go up and make it snug. And I'm also using uh, just Bernay Handicraft yarn. Let me grab uh, a label so you can see what that looks like. So this is a sample of the yarn that I'm using. This is what the label typically looks like. I get this at Michael's. It's a couple dollars. It's super cheap. I use the Handicrafter cotton and it's made by Bernay. This is a good dishcloth yarn if you're making dishcloths. Um, I always have this laying around. I make um, cat toys for my cat and stuff it full of fiber fill and uh, sometimes catnip. So I'm going to use this color today, but that's the yarn I'm using. And let's get started. I also have some of these yarn needles. I use these for sewing in the ends, but you don't need those. You could use your crochet hook if you don't have uh, those don't worry about it. So let's Yeah, let's get started making the case and I'll show you how I do it I know this has been a highly requested video and I said I was making one and I've been working on my pattern and I've got it all sorted out So now I'm excited to show you the process So if you did watch my other video or even if you didn't I'll go through all the steps as if it's brand new So that you don't have to worry about anything you might have missed uh, I do like to start with the magic loop to begin the base. So we'll start with that uh, so anyways, take your yarn like this, and you're going to take your two fingers and lay it across your two fingers, and then I usually just pinch it maybe here at the bottom. So you're going to wrap it around your fingers, and then come up at the front, and you're going to make an X across the back, and then bring your yarn around this side too. So you've got two loops here, you've got an X here, and two loops, and then bring it down here and just kind of pinch it with your bottom two fingers. So you're going to take your crochet hook, flip your hands over. First you're going to go under and then over and then grab this hook or grab this yarn and then twist and bring it up like this. And then you're going to do a single crochet just to secure it like that. And then if you just pull this tail out, that is a magic loop. So when you pull these two strings, it'll make it tighter or looser. I'll show you that one more time just to go through again, because it is a little tricky to start. So you want to have your string like this with two fingers. You're going to pinch it at the bottom with your thumb. Go over your fingers around. Come around the front again. You're going to make an X, so across the back 
over again, bringing it down and just pinching it, maybe with those bottom two fingers, and then roll your fingers forward so you can see the two bars. Go under the first one, over the second one, grab it with your crochet hook, pull it under the first one. I usually just push through a little bit, twist, and come up like this. And then with that string you've pinched with your back fingers, you're, oops, you're going to just hook it there and pull through a single crochet, just like that. And then if you pull out the tail like this, you have your magic loop. So that's going to be our start. You want to keep it a little bit loose so you can add some crochets into that base. And that will be the starting point of your case. Uh, and that will be this part right here. We're going to start here and then work our way out. So now that you have your magic loop, you're going to want to chain two to start. I've made the hole about this size, enough that I can work in that space, but it's not terribly big. Uh, so to begin, now that you have your magic loop, I'm just going to tighten this a little bit there. So you're going to start with a chain two. So one, two, and then you're going to do eight double crochet around in the magic loop. When you're doing this, keep your tail together with the loop and crochet over both of them and that will weave your tail in so you can just trim it at the end. You don't have to worry about uh, doing that after. So that's a little tip which makes it a little bit easier because no one likes weaving in ends. So to do double crochet, you yarn over and I just hold both of the tail and the loop. Put your crochet hook through the loop and then yarn over, pull it back through, yarn over again, pull through the first two loops, and yarn over and pull through the last two. And so you're gonna do that seven more times for a total of eight all the way around. So that's two, Three, four, oops, we'll do that one again. Five, six. seven, and eight. Now that you have those there, you can pull your tail of your magic loop and close the circle a little bit so it starts to look more like a circle. So if you just pinch your work here and pull gently on the tail, you'll see it start to close up. And then what you want to do is you want to slip stitch to the top of your first uh, double crochet so that you have eight double crochet on your little magic loop. So you can count backwards to find the top of that first one. So this is one here, this one, this first one here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That space is right there. And make sure that you're using your working yarn and not your tail. So yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook, and you should have a nice little circle. You can give another tug on that magic loop string and make it more of a circle. So this is the base, this is the starting part of your Tamagotchi case, so it'll be like this circle area right there. Okay, so to work on the next round, uh, before we get started though, I'm gonna trim this, this tail. What's happened is because we've worked over top of the tail, it's already weaved in and we don't need to do that after. So to save ourselves in the future, I'm just going to trim this now so it's out of the way. And also this will be on the inside of your Tamagotchi case, so don't worry if you leave like a little bit of a tail, it's okay, you're not going to see it. Um, that's the beauty. Or if you don't, that's good too. So we have eight uh, crocheted spaces on our next round, we're going to start with a chain one. So you're just going to do a simple chain one like that. And then to begin a round, we're going to work on that in those eight sing or those eight um, double crochet spaces. The pattern will be two single crochet in the first space, 
one single crochet in the next space all the way around using all those eight spaces. So to begin, we're going to do two single crochet in the first space, one and two, and then one single crochet in the next space, <clears throat> two single crochet in the next space, which is our third space, and one single crochet in the next space, which is our fourth space. And then we're going to do two in the next one, which is our fifth space. And then one in the next one, which is our sixth space. And then two in the next one, which is our seventh. And then one in the eighth space, which is our last space. So now we should have 12 stitches around. What we're gonna to wanna to do is slip stitch to the top of our first single crochet in this round. To find that, you can count back 12 spaces. So, or count back 12 single crochet on the edge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There is our 12th right there. So we'll stick our crochet hook through and do a slip stitch, just pulling through both hooks on our yarn, or loops on our hook. And that is our second round. So again, you should have 12 stitches all the way around. We're gonna start on the next round. We're by chaining one. After we chain one, the pattern is going to be two single crochet and then another two single crochet. So let's get started. We'll do two in this first one, in the first free space. There's two, and then two more in the next one. One and two. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on leaving a space for our little keychain or charm area. So to do that, you're going to chain three. So one, two, Three. Now the pattern for this is going to be in each space. We're going to do two single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet, two, two, one, two, two, one. But we're going to do something a little bit different for the first set because we want to make that space for our charm. So we have our two single crochet, our two single crochet, and instead of doing one single crochet in this space, we're going to leave it and go to the next one where we're going to put two and start the pattern again. And again, we've got that chain three on our hook, so this is gonna make the little loop for our charm hole. So there's two, and then go to the next space and do two more. And then in the next space, we'll do one. So that is our first six stitches of 12. And now we wanna go around one more time and do two, two, one, two, two, one. So there's two, and there's two, and then we'll do one, and then one more time, there's two. another two and our last one and now we need to single or slip stitch to the first single crochet of this round and so this is going to give us 22 stitches on the round if you want to count backwards which is what I prefer to do and uh, we'll find where we need to put that slip stitch so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So it's right there. Stick your hook in and pull through both loops. And so there is our round. It's looking really good. And now let's move on to the next one. So again, to start that round, we're gonna do a chain one. This is what we do on the beginning of every round. So we'll start with our chain one. 
and then in the next space we're going to do two single crochet and then in the next space we're going to do one single crochet and then in the next space we're going to do two single crochet And then in the next space, you can see that there's a little kind of tiny space right there before this, this opening starts. We're going to slip the hook in there and do our one single crochet. So our pattern so far is two, one, two, one in the first four stitches. Now we have this space to work with. We're going to make this pretty easy. We're going to work inside the hole and just work right over top of the chain itself. Don't worry about going into the little individual crochets. This is going to be super easy. It's going to build up this opening so it's a little bit more reinforced where our charm hole is. Uh, these are my favorite to work on by the way because they're super easy and they look really good when they're done. So what you're going to do is you're going to put, if you remember we made three chains to make this hole, we're going to put three single crochet in this hole as well. So just stick your hook right in the center. Super easy. Yarn over and do a single crochet. Do that three times. One, two, and our last one, three. And look how nice that looks. Now that hole's reinforced, it doesn't look sloppy, and it matches the border of our round. Now we need to go into that little space on this side of the edge, that's our next crochet. So we're gonna start working with our pattern again. And we're gonna do two single crochet in this space. So there's one, a little bit of a tricky hole to get into, but there we go. We've got two. And then one single crochet in the next space. And then we're going to do that all the way around. So two single crochet. And one single crochet. Two single crochet. One single crochet. two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet, and, two. and one single crochet. I get a bit more yarn from my yarn ball here. Whoops, I always hit the light when I go to reach the yarn. Okay, uh, two single crochet on the next one. and one single crochet. We're getting near the end. Let's do two single crochet. One single crochet. Two single crochet. And one single crochet. So now this is going to give us a round of 33. And so if you want to count back, we're going to slip stitch in the top of our first single crochet of this round. So we will count backwards. Let me see if I can grab, maybe I'll just use my pencil here. Um, so we'll count 33 backwards. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, right there. So we will put our hook in that single crochet and just do a nice little slip stitch to join our round together. Great, that is looking so good. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. This one's easy, you'll like it, I promise. Okay, so this one's super easy. So I told you our last round was 33 stitches. We're just gonna do a simple stitch all the way around. So again, we're starting a new round. So we're gonna do a chain one. And then we're gonna do one single crochet all the way around in this single crochet. And that is going to give us 33 stitches. Again, when we get to the end, we'll slip stitch to the top of this one. So one, two, and I'm gonna do this in real time. I know three, Hopefully that's not too annoying, but it might be helpful for some people. 
four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. I'll get a little bit more yarn from my yarn ball. Twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. Whoops, we'll do twenty nine again because I the yarn split on me, and that can happen. Twenty nine. This yarn especially is bad for that, but uh, there's thirty, thirty one. 32 and 33 and then we want to slip stitch to the top of our first chain and I am going to count them I'm sorry if this part is a little bit it's not what you need but I know it's, it will help some people so let's count backwards on our stitches to find 33 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33 right there. Stick our hook through, yarn over, and pull through both loops on your hook, and that completes our round. Look how good this is looking. So now what's happening is we have done a round that's equal to the round before it, so we're not going to be growing out anymore. The sides are going to start curving in. And if you notice, it doesn't lay completely flat. And that's because it's going to start folding inward for the to wrap around the Tamagotchi. Uh, so that's good. That's what we want. Now we're going to work on some decreases. And I'll go through and show you how to do those. Because now we want to make uh, the sides come a little bit more together. Uh, because we're working with so many stitches, I think just doing the same number of stitches will not get us there fast enough. We need to do some decreases. So let's walk through that round. Again, we're starting a new round, so we're going to do a chain one right here. And now we're going to do, um, our pattern is going to be decrease one, single crochet, single crochet. Decrease one, single crochet, single crochet. So we're going to do that for a certain number of rounds and then we're going to start making the hole for the charging port. So it's not going to be all the way around. So just follow along and we'll do it together. To do a decrease, you're going to stick your hook into the first uh, single crochet. I'll just make sure my camera's focusing properly. Yarn over, pull through the first single crochet. Go through the second single crochet with the yarn still in your hook. Yarn over there, pull through. You should have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that is a decrease. And so we're doing decrease, one single crochet, one single crochet. So in the next space, just do a typical single crochet. And then in the next space, just do another single crochet. And you're going to see your work start to fold inward. We'll flip that around when we're done, but that is just it closing up. And that's what we want. We want it to tighten up around the Tama. So in the next, we're going to do a decrease. 
So yarn, uh, put your, your hook through your work, yarn over and pull up. Put your hook through your work, keeping that yarn over, yarn over again, pull up. You should have three hook or three loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then do a single crochet in the next space and a single crochet in the next space. I'm just gonna keep track of our rounds here. So we're gonna do another decrease. So stick your hook through your work, yarn over, pull through, hook through your work, yarn over, pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. That's a decrease. And then one single crochet in the next space and one single crochet in the next space. We're gonna do this two more times. So, hook through your work, yarn over, pull through, hook through your work, yarn over, pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. In the next space, do a single crochet. In the next space, do a single crochet. And one more time, so, Hook through your work, yarn over, pull through. Hook through your work, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Next space, do a single crochet. And next space, do a single crochet. You can see this is really starting to curve and make a little bowl. Okay, so now we're gonna start working on space for the charging port. So we're going to do a decrease again. So you're going to hook through your work, yarn over, pull through, hook through your work, yarn over, pull through. You have three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then you're going to do one single crochet in the next space. Now we're going to make the little loop or the hole for your charging port. So you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and you're going to slip or you're going to skip, sorry, not slip. You're going to skip the next single crochet. And in the crochet, the next single crochet after that, put one single crochet. And what that does is just like how we did for the charm hole, it leaves a little space for the charging port here. Okay, so we're going to continue back into our pattern all the way around. So sticking your hook in your work, you're going to yarn over. We're going to do a decrease. Hook back in the next single crochet, yarn over, pull up. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then in the next space, space a single crochet. In the next space, a single crochet. And now for your last set of crochets, we're going to continue again with a decrease. So stick your yarn or your hook in your work, yarn over, pull through, hook in your work, yarn over, pull through, pull up with the three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then in the next space, do a single crochet. And then we're going to squeeze in another single crochet in the next space. Now I'm going to show you how to find the beginning of your work instead of counting your stitches. So if you flip over your work, you're gonna be able to see where your first single crochet is. So let me grab my pencil and I'll zoom in as much as possible. So all of these little bars here are single crochets. This one here doesn't have a bar, it's just the, this is the chain one that you did. So you're gonna, this is your first single crochet. You're gonna to wanna to stick your hook right in here, just to the right of this bar. So if you flip it over like this, you can see that that is your first single crochet. And then you're just gonna to wanna to yarn over and pull through both loops and you have your slip stitch. And so you can see that your shell is starting to take shape here. I'm gonna count the stitches just so you can see how many stitches there are because I'm not really sure either with the decreases. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 25, 26, 27. And so we're looking at 27. Now for the next row, we're going to just work up this edge again and keep the same number of stitches all the way around. 
So what you're going to want to do is chain one. And then you're going to want to single crochet in every single crochet around until you get to the opening that you created for the hole for your charging port. So three, four, get a little bit of yarn for my yarn ball. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and there's that little space again, right there, 17. If I can get my hook through, there we go. Okay, so now you're in the space for the chain three, and then you're just gonna wanna put your three crochets right in there, just like we did before. So one, two, three, or basically 18, 19, 20, and then keep going. So you're gonna go in that little space just at the edge of that hole. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. And again, if you flip your work, you can see where your first crochet is. And you can see right here where the first single crochet is. You're gonna have that chain one space. And then you're just gonna slip stitch to the top of your single crochet there. So now at this point, we're gonna to wanna to turn our work. This is the, the good side here. It's curved inward if you haven't already. You can flip your work out. You can see that it's kind of making the Tamagotchi shape, which is perfect. That's what we wanna see. And we'll just test putting a little Tamagotchi in here so matching up the bottom with the charging port. Whoops, we're not curling rocket across the desk. So you can see it's almost there. We're getting pretty good, it's got a nice fit. Uh, lining up the spaces right there for the charm. And then you can see at the bottom, the charging port lines up perfect as well. A little bit hard to focus, but there it is. You can see the charging port hole is basically right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off this edge, make it a little bit uh, tighter or crisper around. And I'll show you how to do that. That's pretty simple too. So let's get our work going the right way here. Finish off the Tamagotchi case and just make a nice finished edge. What we're gonna do is slip stitch in each stitch all the way around, but we're just gonna slip stitch in the first loop of every single crochet. So normally we would be going through the hole here and working in the single crochet with both bars across the top of our hook. But what we're gonna wanna do is just go through the first bar or first loop and just slip stitch in that first loop all the way around on that front edge. So there's one, two, three, four, oops, there we go, five, and you'll wanna be careful, slip stitching will make it a little bit more tight. So if you've sized your case at this point 
and it's really loose, then this is great because this will really help you tighten it up. If your case is already really snug, then you want to go really loose on these slip stitches. Just be careful of being too tight, but this is a way to just make that final adjustment. If it is too loose, you'll definitely get some tightening up when you do the slip stitches around. Um, if you find that your case is fitting perfect, like the example seems to be working, then you just want to do uh, basic tension that you've been doing with all of your crocheting so far. And I mean, when you get to this point, if you uh, get all of your stitches slip stitched in that front edge all the way around, then before you cut your yarn, just test it with your Tamagotchi and keep testing as you go as well. I keep dropping um, loops of the yarn. Again, this yarn likes to uh, split, so it can be finicky, but it is a good yarn to use. But yeah, when you get to the end and you've done all your slip stitches all the way around, you have your finished edge, just test it with your Tamagotchi just to make sure it's good um, so that, you know, you can make adjustments. If you find it is too tight, then go back and uh, either crochet it a little bit looser or just use a bigger hook, like just go up one size for the finishing edge. That will help as well, just to up there to loosen up the tension a bit. I happen to knit or crochet really tight, so I have to be very mindful when I'm doing this to not uh, do it too tight. And so again, like there's many strands to this yarn and it seems to like to split when I'm trying to pull it through, especially with a hook that's this small. So I have to be very careful because it keeps splitting on me, like right there. And also my hook's old and I feel like the hook part of the hook is wore down quite a bit. Oh my goodness. So I find it doesn't hold onto the whole strand of yarn very nicely. As nice as like a newer hook would. A newer hook would be sharper uh, and a little bit easier to work with, I would think. Whoops, we got both loops there. Just going through, just remember to go through that front loop only just to do your finishing edge. And you'll be able to see when you get close. I can see that I have a bit three left here. And I feel like I've done it a little bit tight, but I'm gonna try it. And if it is, I'll just uh, rip it out and redo it again. And it looks like I have one maybe left here. You can really see the difference. You can see that it makes this pretty little edge around the border and it just gives it a polished look. It just looks so nice. It feels tight though, so I think I might've done it too tight, but let's see. We'll put it in and see how it goes. And you do want your case a little bit snug because you don't want it to fall off or be slipping and sliding inside the case when you're trying to push the buttons or play the games, which can be annoying. This one fits pretty nice. I do like that it's a little bit snug. I think I probably went a little bit um, tight on the edges, but I'm okay with this actually. This is what I prefer. Make sure everything lines up and the port is good. Looks very good. I'm pretty happy with that. And you can see in the light there that the loop for the charm is spaced evenly as well. So this is looking really good. I'm really happy with this. So I'm going to, yeah, I think that looks really good. So I'm gonna pop my Tamagotchi out here and I'm just going to finish off this edge. Um, I'll show you how I do it. I'm not the greatest at it. You can, you know, kind of do your own thing if you want, but I'll show you what I do. Uh, so anyways, I cut a tail. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So now that you have it like this, you've got your hook in that last loop. I'm just gonna pull through like that and pull this tight to make the finishing knot, so to speak. And I'm gonna come in with one of my needles to weave in the end. These are just uh, finishing needles. You can use whatever you have, or you can use a hook to weave it around. You don't have to use these needles specifically. If you don't have them, they're 
it's all right to use a hook. So my goal for weaving in the ends is, it's a little bit weird there because of the way we did the edge, but I just wanna follow the stitches that are already there and emulate pulling this string through the other stitches. So I can see that this one goes out to the outside and then curves in here. So I'm going to put it through here to begin with, which makes it follow the same pattern. And then from here, I think what I might do is go down through this loop here to match how the other ones on the side are doing that. And then at this point, it's not perfect, but it uh, gets it close. Once you get into this space, you can weave it down in through some of the loops on the inside. And it is a, a bit tight with the size of needle that I have because my needle's a little bit bigger, but, and I used a smaller hook to make this case, but you can still get it pretty good. Just weave it through a few times until it's up down off the edge and then just trim the tail to hide it out of sight. So I'm going to just pull this like that and trim it up there. And then again, so if you look, you've got the little space for the little charm and the charging port is directly at the bottom off of that line. So if you line them up correctly, then you can pop it right in. And if you don't, I mean, you can spin it around in the case too, or throw it across your desk like a curling rock, which I seem to do a lot. But right there, I can see it's lined up uh, with the charging port. Oops, well, it seems to be checking its social media. There, so I've got the case snug on, and you can see that there's Probably spin it a little bit, but there's a little space for the charging port at the bottom, and then the space right there as well for the uh, charm loops to go through. So I think that's looking pretty good. So I may pop this case in my Tama shop um, online if you want to pick it up. Um, yeah, just because I already have two cases for mine and I probably won't change them. So if you'd like to pick up this one, I'll put a link in the description below. It's basically the Tomashop.com is my Tama shop. And I also have some Mascucci stickers and I haven't made a lot of products yet, but I have some more ideas coming. And I might pop in some more cases for the Uni as well. Um, if you're interested and you don't want to make your own, you could just pick one up. Um, and yeah, so again, just to reiterate with the yarn, I did want to mention. So this one here is a medium weight number four. So if you didn't want to use this exact yarn or you couldn't find this brand in stores, you can just look for a medium weight yarn uh, or number four and hopefully that should be pretty similar. Uh, if you do make your case and you find it's too big, then try going down a size, down a hook size. Or if you find your case is too small, try going up a hook size, that can help too. Everyone crochets or knits differently and has different tension, so that does make a difference. But hopefully this guide will help you get the general um, pattern down to be able to make something to protect your little unis. And yeah, so I hope this is helpful. Again, I'll put the link in the description if you want to check out the shop and pick up this case, or maybe I'll put a few others in there by the time this video goes up as well. Anyways, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That does help the channel and subscribe so you're notified as I post more Tamagotchi videos to my channel and maybe some other things too. I don't know. I like Lego and I travel a bit. Maybe I'm thinking about maybe sharing some other things too. But anyways, subscribe if you'd like and uh, like to learn more about that. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.